Good morning. Now it's time for our morning hymn. We pray that it finds you well. 216, Jesus, the light of the world. so glad that we can say O oh Lord our Lord how excellent is thy name you are excellent you are good that's why we can cry oh thank God for his goodness and his mercy we have gathered here this morning for to worship Lord it's been a long time since we've been here since last Sunday at the benediction so many things could have happened to us, but because your love, goodness, and mercy, and grace saw us through, and we are still here. We want to say thank you now for all of your goodness and mercy. Many of us got up and partake of our breakfast, took our medicines, and made our way to this church. But Lord, there have been so many others who are hurting now, who are suffering now, and we pray for them. We may not know who they are, we may not know their names, but we know that there are those in this city, in this county, our state, our country, our world, who are bereft of health and strength. And so we want to say thank you now. We pray for the remnant here. We pray for our pastor who is going to be bringing unto us the word of life through the power and empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We pray now, Lord, some soul will be saved, some heart will be felt through the power of your Holy Spirit. We give you thanks now for who you are and to whom we belong. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Please focus your attention on the screen for this morning's announcements and greetings. Good morning, 4th Street. Today is Sunday, December the 13th, and these are your announcements. We are requesting Christmas gift donations. Please donate two labeled boy or girl pre-wrapped gifts and bring them all to the church office by December the 16th. Contact the music ministry to sign up as a volunteer. 
For more information, please contact Sister Angelique Riggins. The Singles Ministry will have a Christmas fellowship on Friday, December the 18th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. There will be games, an ugly sweater contest, and Christmas caroling. The meeting ID will be 816-4703-3868 and the passcode is 257399. The Christmas Toy Drive will take place on Saturday, December the 19th at 10 o'clock a.m. The first 50 cars will receive a gift for every child present. It will be held in the church parking lot. For more information, please contact Sister Angelique Riggins. Happy birthday to all of our members born in December. Congratulations to all new parents and grandparents. And congratulations to Brother Jeremy McCrary, who is a featured muralist with Midtown Columbus. His permanent art mural is located at Zoe's Pediatrics. Boy Scout Troop number 69 is having a fundraiser for Camp Spirit Cards for $10 each. Also, they are doing their recharter and registration between now and December the 15th. Their fee will be $33 per boy. Please contact Deacon Moore or the church office. Voters, please request your ballots for the Georgia Senate runoff election. Early voting begins December the 14th at the City Service Center. And the actual election day will take place January the 5th. Please continue to join us for Sunday worship via live stream on 4thStreet.org, Facebook, and YouTube for both worship services on the radio, Fox 105 at 8 o'clock a.m. and on television, WRBL Channel 3 at 8.30 a.m. Please continue to join us for weekly Bible study via Zoom and Facebook Live. Deep, Sish- Deep Sea Fishing on Sundays at 5 p.m. Spiritual Brunch on Mondays at 11 a.m. And Engaging Asking on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. except for the fourth Wednesday. The following church school classes are available at 9.30 a.m. via Zoom. The Christian Family Class. Training for Service and Discipleship. The Intermediate Class. The Men and Women's Class. The Women's Class. The Men's Class. The Young Adult Class. And the Primary Class. The Youth Ministry presents virtual children's class at 6 to 7 p.m. Every first and third Monday is for youth advisors to tell Bible stories, and the second and fourth Mondays are physical fitness with youth officers. Please contact Sister Sharonda Porter for more information. Sympathy is extended to Brother Kenneth Crooks and family for the passing of his wife, Sister Mary Gardner Walker Crooks. Also to Brother Jesse Stanley and family for the passing of his brother, Charlie Stanley. Please take note of the upcoming events. On Friday, December the 18th, the Singles Ministry will have a fellowship at 7 p.m. on Zoom. On Saturday, December the 19th, we will have our our Christmas toy drive at 10 a.m. in the church parking lot. On Sunday, December the 20th, we will have our Christmas recitations at 9.30 a.m. On Monday, December the 21st through the 26th, the church will have a period of rest. On Friday, December the 25th, we will have Christmas Day worship at 7.45 a.m. On Saturday, December the 26th, there will be Real Talk with Men at 8 o'clock a.m. And on Thursday, December the 31st, we will have Watch Night Worship Experience at 9 o'clock p.m. Stay connected with us via Facebook, YouTube, our mobile app, and our website. Please remember our tithing alternatives. You can mail your checks to P.O. Box 1591, Columbus, Georgia 31901. You can use the Finance Drop Box located inside the Educational Building, or you can access us via Givelify. Please take a moment to review the prayer list and pray for everyone on it. If you are interested in invitation to discipleship, please contact the church office at 706 324 20 Five, five. Or you can email us at fsadmin at bellsouth.net and fourstreetmbc at gmail.com. At this time, we'd like to welcome all of our guests who are visiting with us today. We hope that you enjoy the service and please come again. The church office will be open Monday through Fridays, 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. and on Saturdays, 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. Please have your weekly announcements emailed to fsadmin at bellsouth.net or 4 at gmail.com by 4 o'clock p.m. on Wednesdays. 
Thanks for your attention and have a blessed week. Ooh, look at everybody giving their tides. Mm. Well, I didn't bring any cash. I didn't bring my checkbook. Girl, I didn't even bring a pen. So, guess they have to catch me next Sunday. No, you can still give. Huh? Yeah. How? Through Givelify. Givela what? Givelify. Givela who? Givelify. How am I gonna do that? Do you have a phone with you? Go to your app store and download Give Givelify. How do you spell that? G I V E uh -huh. L I okay. F Y. Okay. Look at your church, Fourth Street. Find the amount you want to give. Okay. Tap. Give. Done. That's it? That's it. Just that easy. Just that easy. Girl, I just gave the fly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you just did that. <laughs>
pray and to bring presence to the church throughout this week up until Saturday we ask that you will have them gift wrapped it we need presence of every age group we know that this is the reason for the season is to lift up the present Jesus but this is a way to show the generosity of Jesus through the presenting of gifts to those who are the least the less and the lost and so on Saturday between 10 and 12 our music ministry as well as the ushers ministry the young adult ministry will be in the parking lot and we will have a drive up community Christmas giveaway so if you have not brought your gift by we ask that you would please do so throughout the week and you can bring it to the front office please wear your mask please practice physical distancing and you can drop your gift off that it will show and represent that we are truly a caring sharing fruit bearing fellowship living in the victory of Jesus Christ so thank you so very much we love you God bless you God keep you we do have a call to talk a call to community a call to action on the third Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. Sir Michael Jones is the president and brother uh, Ward is vice president and this is an opportunity if you want to plug in uh, to a community uh, organization to make a difference please uh, call Sir Michael or call the front office or you can look for that information on zoom uh, or either on our Facebook or our uh, website uh, to get the information to zoom in or to call in on Saturday at 10 a.m. Thank you so very much. God bless you. God keep you. It's our prayer. And we are so thankful that we have a African-American chief of police. We want to congratulate chief of police, um, Mr. Blackman. Mr. Blackman, Chief Blackman, has been in the police department for a number of years at the highest levels, and we want to congratulate the mayor, city manager, and others, the council, for being sensitive to this present age and within our city, that they would bring forth the second African-American police of, chief of police in this city of Columbus, Georgia. So we are very grateful. We ask it for your prayers for Chief Blackman and for our city. And also we have a, the first African-American um, sheriff. And so we want to pray for uh, Sheriff Countryman and continue to lift him up as he takes the reins of our sheriff department. We want to ask that you prepare to vote early, early voting, December 14th. Make sure you get out through your absentee ballot. Uh, also, January 5th, we cast our ballot and cast our voice. And we need to make sure that we have senators that can help the present incoming elected president and vice president by having senators who will help push forth the agenda that will turn this country around and so we ask that you would get out and 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 and, and make sure that we put forward those who have our best interest at heart. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we come now and we thank you for this opportunity to worship one more time. We come, Lord, praising your holy and divine name. We come thanking you for so many blessings that you provided 
for us, for our families. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for eternal life. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who indwells every believer. We just come saying thank you. And we thank you for reminding us for the true reason of this season. That you loved us so much that you would wrap yourself in flesh. Be conceived in the womb of a virgin called Mary by the Holy Spirit. Born in Bethlehem of Judea. The Bible says in Matthew that you came to save your people from their sins. Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you for reminding us through your word. Help us to remain focused during this time that we not get entangled with the commercialism with ourselves that we miss Christ we pray oh heavenly father that you will bless now in such a special way bless this world bless this country bless this state bless this city bless this community bless this church bless churches all across this land and Lord, we thank you for those who have come to bring a vaccine to the public square. We pray, Lord, that it will be of such that it would help to provide a cure to mitigate to eradicate this vicious and deadly virus we pray its effectiveness pray its safety bless now families who have had loved ones to transition bless now their comfort and their peace bless now our children grandchildren great grandchildren bless husband and wives bless sisters and brothers bless bless now families throughout this land bless now our health and our strength bless now those in hospitals and nursing homes and ICUs and CCUs bless now Keep us in the palm of your hands is our prayer. Bless those in the radio listening audience, those in the streaming live, and those who are Facebook live. Bless now in the name of Jesus. Bless this worship. Bless now. This is your servant's prayer. It's in the name of Jesus we lift it up to you amen amen and amen we ask that you would open your hearts and your minds and your ears to listen to what the lord has placed on the musician's heart to render this morning as we prepare for the word of god
for a chance to get it right to do the best I can I thank God oh for just one more chance one more chance one more chance I thank my God just for one more chance one more chance to do the best I can I thank God just for one more chance How many in the streaming audience, how many in the radio listening can just go ahead and say, I thank, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. Yeah. I, I, I thank God. One more time to get it right. For one more day. Yeah, God. Then I'll turn around and just yeah, thank him for one more chance. Yeah, God. How many in the streaming audience? How many in the radio live audience? Yeah, How many in the Facebook live audience? Wherever you are, you ought to just go ahead and just thank God for one more day, one thank more you, chance. Me up. Yeah, just yeah, thank God. him. But I thank you for. Right yeah. God. Yeah. One more chance. Yeah. Get it right. What I did on yesterday. Take this opportunity. Thank you, God, for making me see one more day to get it right. room what about at your breakfast table what about riding in your car he's everywhere is there anybody in this house the holy spirit is riding because when you truly know who's giving you one more chance one more day you ought to just go ahead and give him some praise hallelujah praise his holy name he's worthy Thank you, Sister Holyfield. Thank you, musicians, for reminding us to thank God for one more day and to thank Him for one more, more chance. He's a God, not just of a first or second, but He's a God of many. Many, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that he gives us one more chance day by day? To God be the glory for what he has done, what he is doing. And I am an eager anticipating what he will continue to do. Is there anybody out there in the streaming live? congregation in the Facebook live congregation in the radio listening audience is there anybody out there 
that can go ahead and just praise him. I, I feel you. I feel you. I, I believe that you you believe like we believe. The remnant that's here. I, I believe the Holy Spirit is just riding, moving. Go ahead and have yourself a worship too. We're collectively still corporately worshiping and praising his holy name. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Yeah. Thank you for being available to the moving of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. There is a word from the Lord this morning. And I want to ask if you would go with me to Exodus chapter number 15. Exodus chapter number 15. We find that God has brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he has allowed them to travel over to the other side of the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army is pursuing. And because of God's power. We see that he drowns Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea. And now we find in Exodus chapter 15, Moses and his sister Miriam response to what God has done. Let us listen Exodus chapter 15, verse number 2 through 4. Let us listen. Many theologians, many biblical scholars call this the song of Moses. But we want to start with verse 2, which would be our sermon text verse. But we will conclude at verse number 4. Verse number 2. Moses penned under the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. This is my God. And I will praise him. My father's God. And I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea. And his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. Amen. The Lord is my strength. And my song. And I just want to just challenge our paradigm this morning. I just want to, to challenge us. I had mentioned first Sunday that I want to do a series on what is the object of your. And I think I started off by challenging us to really look at what is the object of our, your hope. And today, I want to challenge us by raising the question, what is the object of your strength? What is the object of your strength? Say the word strength. And immediately, one thinks of diet plans, workout routines, and trips to the gym when we were able to get there. The word reminds us of the workout clothes we bought last year with good intentions, but never wore them. 
To be physically strong and fit is a fine and noble and admirable goal. But oh, my brothers and sisters, there is a greater strength that is even more essential than we can ever think and we can ever imagine. The Bible, my brothers and sisters, offers many valuable object lessons on discovering strength when you feel tired and overwhelmed. God wants his word to comfort us in hard times and encourage our faith when we feel despaired. However, let us not be hoodwinked and bamboozled. Satan's goal is to make us feel weak, worthless, useless, and ultimately his goal is to destroy us. So come close. We those of us who declare that Jesus the Christ is the Lord of our lives, sometimes buy into the lies that we are somehow not strong in Christ. We give in to feelings, we give in to emotions that we can never experience God's strength. You know, my brothers and sisters, if this is you in the radio listening audience, if this is you in the streaming live audience, if this is you in the Facebook live audience, if this is you in the remnant here, then beware. God want you to be clear about the object of your strength. So I come this morning to ask you the three million dollar question in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of death, in the midst of secularism, in the midst of humanism, sin, pain, depression, discouragement, and despair. What is the object of your strength? Come close. Romans chapter 15 verse 4 tells us, for everything that was written in the past Another translation says in old times, former times, was written, one translation says, for our learning. Another translation says, to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. So what can we learn from the scriptures? Old dispensation, Old Testament, New Dispensation, New Testament regarding what is the object of one's strength. What was the object of the Old Testament chosen people of God's strength? So here's lesson number one that I would ask that you would pay close attention to. Uh, the Lord is my strength. Come close. Our text verse. Moses declared. In Exodus chapter number 15 verse 2. The Lord is my strength and my song. He goes on to say, and he has become my salvation. 
this is my God and I will praise him. My father's God, I will exalt him. My brothers and sisters, Moses' strength consisted in the power that God alone, alone, alone could supply. It was the Lord who had given Moses and the people of Israel deliverance from their Egyptian pursuers. Moses. Words reflect more than this. However, for, for God's strength was the source of Moses' personal salvation. Because of his relation to the Lord, Moses could have strong courage and full confidence, not in himself per se, but in God. To be able to accomplish his divinely appointed task that lay ahead. Moses teaches us his strength, the object of his strength was in God. Moses had confidence, faith, that God would also lead his people into the land of promise. So all my brothers and sisters, the lesson that we find in this Old Testament passage. The object of Moses' strength was clear. The object of his strength was in God. Amen. But there's another lesson that we can find and we can extract. We can lift up from the Old Testament. You do remember David, don't you? Come, come here, David. David was an outstanding example of one who had come to rely totally upon God's strength for his daily task and all his needs. You do remember Psalm 18, verses 1 through 2. Those of you who Engage in Bible study, those who engage in Sunday school, but those who may have some fog memory. Let me just remind you what David said. David said, I love you, Lord, my source of strength. Let me just rewind that. Let me just press it forward again. David said, I love you, Lord, my source of strength. The Lord is my high ridge, my stronghold, my deliverer. My God is my rocky summit where I take shelter. My shield, the horn that saves me, and my refuge. The object of David's strength <laughs> was God. And I just want to just ask you, what is the object of your strength? We learned the lesson in the Old Testament from Moses and David. The object and the source of their strength yeah, yeah, yeah. was God. Can I just fast forward? There's a second lesson here. It's lesson number two. What was the object of the New Testament believer's strength? Come close. Lesson number two. The object of their lesson was in Jesus the Christ, yes, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Oh, what a lesson to learn from the scriptures. So if you had to call anybody to the witness stand, Brother Dickinson, 
Brother Perter, can I call Brother Apostle Paul? The Apostle Paul could testify that he commonly experienced times of suffering for which he was in himself insufficient to bear. Yet, he welcomed all that happened, even those trials. Paul had a personal infirmity, which despite his pleas, God was strengthening him to bear by faith. Don't miss that. He faced many kinds of attacks against him in his ministry for Christ. And, and if you need a biblical reference, it's right there in 2 Timothy chapter number 4, verse 15. It's there. But nevertheless, through it all, I said through it all. He could remember that the Lord had assured him. Come on, somebody. My grace is enough. Somebody say my grace is sufficient, but my grace is enough for you. My grace is sufficient for you. For my power, don't miss this, is made perfect in weakness. You remember in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 9, hey, that's where it is. He testified. Because the strength he possessed had its source in God. In Jesus. In the empowering of the Holy Spirit. He could go on to face any difficulty or hardship. But it just didn't stop there. Likewise, in his epistle to the Philippians, you do know it. Paul declares that it is not in his power, not in his strength, that he lives out his life and ministry, but solely in the Lord's strength. Paul says, I have experienced times of need and times of abundance. Many of you in the King James language, it says, I've learned how to be abased. And I've also learned how to be abound. I have learned in any and every circumstance, <laughs> in every situation, I I have learned the secret of contentment, whether I go satisfied or hungry, have plenty or nothing. I am able to do all things through the one who strengthens me, Paul said in Philippians 4 verses 12 through 13. And Paul says, as comfort points, this power, this powerful presence enabled Paul to, to go through bad times and, and good. You ought to get comforted by that. Yeah, that. That's the comfort point that Paul was lifting up to everyone maybe facing difficulties and trials and tribulations in this day and time. You ought to be comforted in knowing the object of Paul's strength <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. clearly testified to yeah, yeah. the Lord. Paul no longer relied on his own strength. And I'm afraid that's what happens sometimes within our culture today that practice find strength within yourself. It's a self-focus. It's a human focus. It's a man-woman focus. It's a man-woman centered. Teenager centered. But 
the Old Testament and we come to the New Testament and, and we find that they, 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 they clearly not on their own intellect but by the illumining of the Holy Spirit even in their struggles and their trials and tribulations they, they discovered to not rely on their own strength but on the strength of the Spirit of Jesus the Christ who lived in him and work through him I just come by to just tell you this morning Paul clearly believed the object of his strength was in Jesus the Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit and I just come by this morning to just challenge us to just provoke us to truly examine and ask the question, what is the object of my strength? What is the object of your strength? You in the radio listening audience, you in the streaming live audience, Facebook live audience, during this time of pandemic, take some time to examine, to audit, to evaluate. What is the object? Who is the object of your strength? But here's lesson number three. That's a good question, isn't it? The object of your strength is the glorious might of God through Jesus the Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit. Those of us who declare Jesus the Christ as our Savior and as our Lord, the glorious might of God through Jesus the Christ Empowered by the Holy Spirit is the object of our strength. The true object of your strength that you receive from the glorious might of God through Jesus the Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, is so much more than money. So much more than material things, material possessions. So much more, so much better than health so much better than a sex life so much better than a feeling of happiness or a life of success instead my brothers and sisters the object of your strength is in Jesus the Christ Empowered by the Holy Spirit. He produces in you, in me, the strength to live in the will, the way, and by the word of God. It cannot be done any other way. I'm a, I, it's noble to try. The Bible says trust. <laughs> and obey yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Jesus will for you is not some road map that tells you where to live Jesus will for you is not some uh, road map that tells you who to marry and what job to pursue what career to pursue instead my brothers and sisters Jesus desire for your life is that you be saved rescued from the power and the penalty of sin and to one day be rescued from the presence of sin Jesus the desire for your life is that you will commit to follow him, Jesus the Christ, 
I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me. I have decided to follow. To follow. To follow Jesus. That you spiritually mature. Not stay as a immature spiritual baby but that you spiritually mature and grow in holiness one who is set aside to live in the victory of Jesus Christ so that you will glorify God in everything that you do that he gets the glory he gets all of the praise that you will worship not only by lip service but by 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 serving one another your 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 your, your lip service matches your walk matches your practice jesus my brothers and sisters desire for you is to serve him by serving your brothers and your sisters John lifts up, he says, how can you say you love God? How, how can you say you love God who you've never seen and hate your brother and hate your sister? You must know, my brothers and sisters, the object of your strength is God through Jesus the Christ. Empowered by the Holy Spirit to live in the victory and the triumph of Jesus the Christ. Old Testament tells us, teaches us, Moses declared the object of his strength. After being delivered from the captivity of the Egyptian Pharaoh. After the the deliverance of the children of Israel across the Red Sea. Moses declared through song. That God was the object of his strength. David declared that God was the object of his strength. It was not the slingshot. No, no, it was not the three stones that he picked up from the brook David declared the object of his strength was the Lord Paul declared as we traveled over to the New Testament the object of his strength was in Jesus the Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit Paul came to understand not by his own intelligence not by his own illumination but Paul discovered by the illumination and the discernment of the Holy Spirit He declared that in my weakness, in my infirmities, in my insults, 
I have to recognize is in my weakness. God's strength is made perfect. And we have to come to that understanding as believers in Jesus the Christ it's in our acknowledging our weakness it's in acknowledging I cannot do this by myself in acknowledging that I cannot bear it all by myself the Bible says cast all of your cares cast all your concerns cast all of your words upon him because he cares for you and I just come by to ask you what is the object of your strength can you say without reservation can you say without hesitation that you truly and sincerely believe the object of your strength is in the one who came down through 40 and two generations can you truly say with confidence the object of my strength is in the one who was conceived in the womb of a virgin called Mary by the Holy Spirit can you truly say I believe in the one who is the object of my strength he went to a hill called Calvary gave us a hands to the nails gave us a feet to the nails he cried out of I be lifted up can you truly confess and come on somebody and acknowledge the object of your strength is in the one who said if I be lifted up my death will draw all men boys and girls unto me can you truly come on somebody believe in the one the object of your strength in the one who laid down allow them to put nails in his hands allow them to put nails in his feet he bled suffered and died just for you can you truly really say that you believe the object of your strength is in the one who created crying out Father forgive them for they know not what they do can you truly say the object of your strength is in the one who took your place who took my place who took on the wrath of God took on the condemnation of God took on the judgment of God can you truly and sincerely and earnestly say the object of your strength is in the one who cried out it's a finish tattleless I paid it in full you can't add nothing to it and your show can't take nothing away can you truly say the object of your faith the object of your strength is in the one come on somebody who locked his head in his shoulder and gave up his life and I'm so glad that the object of Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus was in the one who has suffered died and shed in innocent blood Died between the sixth and the ninth hour. They went to Pilate, requested his dead body, put it in a borrowed new tomb. Can you say the object of your strength is in the one who is in that borrowed tomb all Friday night? Come on, somebody, all day Saturday, all Saturday night. Can you truly say the object of your strength is in the one over 2,000 
here we go Early 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 Sunday morning He pulled the sting from death Pulled the victory from the grave Rolled it up in his divine hand Placed it in the vault of eternity And early Can you truly say The object of your strength Is in the one That God raised Early Early Sunday morning With all power All power In his hands In heaven And in earth Can you truly say The object of your strength Is in the one Who said I will tear this temple down And I'll raise it In three days And sure enough God raised him In three days Demonstrating his promise is absolutely true. His power is absolutely real. Can you truly say the object of your strength is in the one who walked around for 40 days showing himself to the disciples, showing himself to 500 or more. Now he sits on the right hand throne of the Father. Can you truly say that the object of your your strength is in the one who will one day I don't know when I sure don't know where I don't know what time but one thing I do know the object of my strength is in the one who promised he's coming back again hallelujah praise is a holy name he's worth Anybody know he's worthy? He's worthy. Is there anybody in the streaming audience? Anybody in the Facebook live audience? Anybody in the radio listening audience? Anybody in the remnant here? Truly believe he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun. To the going down of the same I know some people say It don't take all of that But let me just tell you You're absolutely correct It takes all of this And some more He's worthy Yes he is He's worthy Hallelujah Praise is a holy name He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. What is the object of your strength? Can you truly say without hesitation or reservation the object of your strength is Jesus the resurrected living Christ and the empowering of the Holy Spirit and if you cannot say that then I want to invite you today from our radio listening audience from our streaming live audience from our Facebook live audience and even those in the remit here I want to invite you to believe in Jesus the Christ, the object of our strength. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In other words, you will be rescued from the power of sin. You shall be rescued from the penalty of sin because we've been taught the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life and I will not go through this season I will not go through this day not having a relationship with God through Jesus Christ we didn't say joining a church we didn't say enter into a religion we didn't say enter into a denomination we talk about having a love trust obedient relationship with God through Jesus Christ and I tell you when the Holy Spirit convicts when he convert and when he compel then you can't help but want to become a part of his body which is the church 
the called out one, the ecclesia, called out of darkness into the marvelous light. We pray that you will come and you will be united and you will come to be a part of this wonderful ecclesia known as the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. So if you say, I am a sinner, I repent of my sins, I confess that I'm a sinner. And I have come to be convicted that I need a savior. I need a Lord in my life. I, I need to be clear. I need to be guided by the Holy Spirit to confess and repent that the object of my strength, the object of my salvation, the object of my sufficiency is in Jesus the Christ. And we invite you this morning, the door of the church is open. Jesus' arms are open. Our arms are open to receive you right now. The only thing you would need to do right now is call this number 706-324-2055 706-324-2055 and say to them that I am saved I repented I confess I invited Jesus into my heart the object of my faith the object of my strength is Jesus the object of my salvation is Jesus the object of my eternal life is Jesus and when we come, we will baptize you. But the moment that you believe, you were baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. But when we return, then you can publicly say, I too believe I desire to obey Jesus by being immersed in the liquid grave, buried in Christ and raised in the newness of life. You become a candidate for baptism, water baptism. Call that number, leave your name, leave your contact information, and we will follow up with you. If you relocated to this city, maybe to Phoenix City, Columbus, Georgia, Harris County, Midland, Casita, Fort Benning, Fort Mitchell, wherever you are, you relocated here because of military reassignment, job relocation, Maybe you are a student who are matriculating through one of the colleges and universities, community colleges, or one of the technical schools in the surrounding area. We invite you to unite here, to anchor here at the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church, where you can continue as you increase, as you matriculate through secular education. You can continue to be spiritually educated, that you may grow and mature in the will, the way, and the word of God. Call this number, 706-324-2055. Let them know I relocated here. And I desire to unite at the Voice of Missionary Baptist Church. Maybe you strayed away. You've tried to handle everything on your own and you just felt that God had turned his back on you. You've been trying to handle everything in your own strength. And I pray through this message by the empowering and the illumining and the enlightening of the Holy Spirit that you can now understand that you can never live this life in your own strength. But it's only through the strength of God through Jesus Christ and power by the Holy Spirit. We encourage you we appeal to you to be restored back into fellowship you too can call this number 706-324-2055 and just say i want to be reunited at the fourth street missionary baptist church i want to be reunited in fellowship we thank you we continue to pray for all of you and you continue to pray for us that in due time, that God by way of his Holy Spirit will lead us again back into person to person, corporate worship. We eagerly anticipate the day. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for praising God and worshiping God. 
even through the virtual streaming radio listening audience thank you remnant that's being here we're going to ask now that you worship through giving those who use givelify we ask that you would take time right now to go to givelify go to the fourth street missionary baptist church whether you're members or guests we invite you to go to givelify go to the site the fourth street missionary baptist church look for the crib the cross and empty tomb the symbol the brand the emblem and make your generous contribution there through tithe and offerings we thank you if you choose to drop it off we ask that you prepare the provided envelope that the church has provided to you we ask that you would take time right now and just check off the contribution boxes categories please update your legal name full name your address your phone number any contact information that we can continue to update our database you can drop off your envelope between Monday through Saturday Monday through Friday 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturdays from 9 to 1 we do ask that you will wear your mask practice physical distancing and you can drop off your envelope at the drop-off box in our Christian education building if you choose to mail it in God bless you thank you for mailing it in we ask that you would go ahead and take time right now fill out that provided envelope that the church provides check off the categories and also put your name your number address the specific amount and then put it into an addressed envelope with the address the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church P.O. Box 1591 1591 Columbus Georgia 31901 and we praise God and we thank God for you Dear God, we thank you for these who will freely and generously give and worship through tithe and offerings. We thank you for leading them by way of your Holy Spirit to demonstrate your spirit of generosity. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that you will bless them in a mighty way. It's in the precious name of Jesus we ask that you would take this offering, bless it, continue to use it to advance your kingdom. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray, amen. Thank you so very much for all that you do for the love of God through Jesus Christ. Do God dismiss us from this place but never, never from your grace those of us who declare Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives help us to be crystal clear the object of our strength is in Jesus the Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit now we ask that you dismiss us from this place but never never from your grace never from your presence never from your power your presence nor your protection it's in the precious and glorious name of jesus from whom all blessings flow let us all sing here below praise 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 praise
ye heavenly host. Praise, praise, praise. And threefold, amen. God the Father, amen. God the Son, Amen. God the Holy Spirit, we're going to ask if you would please take time and go to your classes, virtual church school transformation, spiritual transformational classes at 930. We ask our youth, we ask our children, we ask our young adults, we ask our middle ages, we ask our golden ages if you would continue to study and then help someone if they are not able to access our uh, Zoom or call in, please be available to assist them. If you have a caregiver, please ask that caregiver to call the front office and we will walk you through that that caregiver can connect you through Zoom, Facebook Live, streaming, or call in. God bless you. Power to all. May God's blessings be upon you. Walk in his strength. To God be the glory. You may be dismissed. Thank you so very much, everyone. Thank you so very much for tuning in with us and listening to the message. We pray that it was a message to inspire. We pray that it was a message to encourage. We also pray that it was a message to convict. If you do not have a church home, we pray that you will come and join us here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church, where we're located at the corner of 3rd Avenue and 5th Street in the historic district. And if you do not have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we want you to know that he desires that you be saved right now. Again, thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you on next week.